Hey guys, Hacktical here, and have you guys ever had a Cobalt 24 volt max battery that when the charger says it's fully charged, you only get two or three bars out of it? Well, there's a good reason why, and it's probably because one of your cells inside the battery is bad or low. So that's where this video will help you understand how to get from a bad battery to a good battery by taking these cells out and fixing them and putting them back in. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, you're going to need a uh, Torx bit, I think it's T15, uh, with the uh, security bit on there so that you can uh, take these out. These are obviously all pre-done so that you don't have to sit here and watch me, but that's how it goes out. There's just four here that would come out. And this one was pretty easy to get to, so I could use the, uh, the normal size tip on there. If you are doing it on an extended battery, like this one, uh, I had to drill out these to 5 16 to be able to get my bit inside there to get them. Otherwise, you should get a longer uh, bit to be able to get down into the, the bit hole there. So, uh, moving on. This one is obviously bad, and so we're going to look at what made it bad. Take that apart. And this is probably what your batteries are going to look like. Mostly, this one already has some modification to it. Uh, it's been a donor battery before, but this is the idea. Got these strips on here. So if you're missing batteries out of it, then that's probably your, your biggest problem. Uh, this is a bad battery, so I took some cells out of it. And the way that I knew which cells were bad was just by taking my multimeter and being able to test it. Get a good workstation here. Fluke multimeter. And you can just test um, the edge, sides of each battery. They can be uh, connected or not. So as you can see, just touching off on these. And got 0.4, okay, 0 0.29, 0 0.2. Uh, the only battery that had any juice was this one at two, well, I guess minus two. <clears throat> yeah, two volts, so definitely not doing good. And just to uh, confirm, this is the batteries I took out of it, and the reason I took them out is because they were good. And look at that, 4.14 volts. So you can see which batteries are bad. Now, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this one that's got two volts, I might be able to charge it back up if I take it out and then use my handy Amazon charger. It's like 10 bucks or something. So take that out and then charge the battery directly. I might be able to bring that one back. The ones that are at 0.4 volts, uh, they might be lost causes. So that's something for you to think about. But you can check each battery individually, and it does actually check each battery individually. Um, and then the big thing is, is to get them out of here. So you can see where I already did this. Uh, it's a little demo and destruction to get there, but I'll walk you through it. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. You don't have to mess with any of this uh, circuit board stuff. All you got to do is worry about getting this. Uh, there is two weld spot weld points that hold to each battery on both the positive and the negative. So that's what you have to kind of break. And for this side, um, I took them both off, but uh, you can see how then it's just getting the plastic out of the way here to be able to push the battery out. So uh, that's what we're gonna have to do next. So let's go ahead and get that going. I already know which batteries I'm gonna be getting out. <clears throat> so I just take my little flathead screwdriver here and let's do it on this one. Just got to get it started. All right, got underneath it. So just giving myself some room to work here. And that one popped up pretty easy. So you can see how just a little bit of force was able to pop that out. That's not common, I would say. A lot of times I have to give it a lot of force. Uh, but So it depends on if you want to try to reuse these, then you got to be nice with them. So that, that part is up to you. But basically, I just try to get underneath this metal piece here that's spot welded on. And then pick it up Ooh, with my side cuts and just 
kind of prying and pulling away and there we go it broke free this one's obviously a little a little more janged there but uh, we can bend it back and well and solder it on back later but there you go that one's done so then we can just go ahead and work the other side out Ugh. well that one did not work mm -mm -mm. So the spot weld stayed on there, so I just got to cut it off. Um, I can still uh, solder back on, so no big deal. And then same thing here. Hopefully this actually focuses. You can see it. And there it is. And get that out of the way, for one. But we can bend that back later and re-solder it back on. So not a problem. You can leave it hanging here if you want. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll just go ahead and get show you how to get this battery out. So this one I already took off, and I know that I'm not going to reuse this battery, so I just cut that stuff off, because this is a donor battery. Because it had four dead cells in it, so I only saved the two instead of replacing all four. Ugh. So same thing, the top weld seems to be a little stronger. There. That one's out now too. So now the battery is not held in by anything other than this plastic pieces here. So I typically get the plastic pieces from the uh, negative side and just put my screwdriver in here, get underneath it, and then crack it up. Just pry up on it, because you have to get the battery to be able to be uh, fully visible here. <clears throat> and if you're using a metal device, I've done this before, uh, where I shorted between uh, two, you know, positive and negative of one of the other batteries. So that's why I got this, um, it's kind of anodized one, so it doesn't do that. And obviously watch your fingers, safety first. I'm sure you guys are all wearing safety glasses and PPE. Just like I am, of course. And the last little bit. There we go. So now that battery is clean and free. And so now um, just got to push it out. I was able to mostly move it. That's how you know it's clean and free. Still got a little bit of plastic here that was holding it, black plastic. But it was mostly able to move just with my fingers. So I'm just going to give it a little, little oomph. And there you go. And you want to get the, as much plastic out as you can because it'll rip this up and I don't, yeah. I have an example of when it rips and then you got a exposed negative there. Uh, not a huge deal, but uh, if you can, try to keep them nice. And there you go, got a battery out. <clears throat> so, uh, if you're trying to put it in another battery, so let's say that, <laughs> here's another donor battery. Let's say that you wanted to pull one of these out and... Uh, replace two so I've, they always fail for me two at a time so or it's usually like that side by side uh, so if I wanted to take those two out and then replace them or take these ones out and then replace them uh, then you need to match the current or the uh, voltage sorry that's in the rest of the batteries so you're going to have to uh, charge them or discharge them to match the rest of the battery so if you uh, use your handy charger here and charge it up to 4.2 volts, but the rest of the battery is sitting at 3.7 volts because it wasn't fully charged when the battery died, then you're going to always get uh, two or three when you hit the battery button here. You're always gonna get two or three bars, even though the charger says that it's fully charged and it stopped because it doesn't balance the batteries very well. So you have to do the balancing yourself and that's where you gotta take your, uh, your multimeter and figure out what voltage the rest of the batteries are and then have your donor batteries match that. Otherwise, you're gonna be plagued with uh, with problems of never being able to charge up and dying fast, faster than it should. But let's say you got these, you either charged it up to the, you know, uh, these are a 3.7, this one is a two, and you charge that all the way back up to three or whatever. You match the battery voltage, then you can slide this sucker back in 
uh, new one, I guess. Slides back in pretty easy. Then you would take this back down. And ooh, 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 this is pretty sharp, <laughs> so I'm going to flatten these out a little bit. So it's not so much of a safety hazard. Yeah, that side's mostly there. And then this side needs some love too. Okay. So now that it's flat on there, I'm just going to sit it here. Um, get your soldering iron. I got some soldering wire. Um, and if you let this soldering wire touch between these two batteries, it will, uh, it'll shock and, uh, and awe. <laughs> so make sure that you keep that safe. Here's my soldering iron. It's a pretty uh, decent size of wattage, so it does it pretty quickly. Uh, I'm not a soldering master. I'm sure some of you guys are. Uh, but I just tin up my soldering iron. And then <clears throat> just start to transfer the heat. Soldering iron is very hot. So it's going to do it pretty quickly. If you have a 25 watt or something, it's going to take a while. But I just hold it down, transfer the heat until uh, the battery, um, the solder starts sticking to the battery. And then you let it go. Let the solder cool. And there you go. That side is soldered. It's on there pretty good. It's not coming off. Um, you do want to make it flat so that it's kind of not sticking up. So you can see it's sticking up a little bit. You want to push that down. Um, you can even just use, you know, whatever you got to uh, make sure it's not going to go out there. <clears throat> um, another thing that I didn't do, uh, didn't show you because those, uh, those things came off pretty nicely, is this is a battery that I've already soldered, but uh, there's a lot of sticking up on here. So what I've done is taken my uh, bench grinder or something and knock that down uh, because sometimes it's solder. You could just unsolder it if you want. Uh, but some of these, um, I'm not finding good. Uh, yeah, I already sanded these down. So I sanded it down and there was the weld points sticking up on there and they were causing problems. So you want to get that flat so that you can get a good solder surface on there. Otherwise, if you have those weld points that are sticking up, it's going to cause these to sit back farther up and cause it to stick out and you're going to have a tough time getting it back in the battery case. So some more good things to think about. I'll solder this one on since we're going. And let's see, this uh, can definitely use a little, a little more love. Yeah, and this is a good example of uh, those solder points sticking up kind of high. <clears throat> trying to bend that bad down back. Whoop. All right, starting the solder. Sucker is hot. You want to make sure that the solder is going to the battery and not just to this uh, this metal piece. Or else it's not going to get a good connection. And there you go. That one's soldered on. Definitely could have done a better solder job there. Uh, just trying to show you guys what to do here. And if you wanted to check it to make sure that the solder job was good, or at least uh, maybe not good, but connecting and getting some power across, is you can touch off on the sides that are not the battery. And <laughs> I forgot this was a junk battery that I just soldered back into it, but yeah, I'm um, I'm getting the same reading whether I touch off on the battery or not. So uh, that's what we wanted. There we go. So assuming that you would have put a good battery back in there, not a bad one like I did, uh, just for the purpose of this video, then this should have worked. You just have to do that two more times, or actually in this case, six more times. Uh, but then you'd be able to have a battery and you can put these uh, things back on it, put it back in the case, 
and then have to scrub off the bad because then this would be a good battery. Anyway, I uh, hope that was a informative video for you. Uh, if you have questions or anything, let me know and I'll try to make another one. Thanks, see ya.